Hi, my name is Lily and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be announcing the second round of Pixarathon. So if you've been here for a little while, you'll know all about Pixarathon, which I hosted last year, I believe it was June or July maybe. And this year it's going to be in August. So Pixarathon is a Pixar themed readathon that runs for the whole month. So that's from the 1st to the 31st of August. You can choose to either do it in my time zone, which is the UK or in your own time zone. If you participated last year, please do not be surprised that there's going to be a few little changes here and there. And one of the things is there's going to be a new structure for Pixarathon, which is completely optional, but I would encourage you to follow it. So Pixarathon, as I said, is a Pixar themed readathon. This is all inspired by the various movies created by Pixar. There are obviously lots of them and there's more every year. So the way I have done it is every single movie has a prompt except for sequels. So things like Toy Story 2, 3, 4, Cars 2 and 3, they don't have their own prompt because that would just kind of get out of hand. But things like Monsters University does because I kind of think it, of it as a separate movie because it's a prequel. I apologize now if you hear any noises like dog toys or anything like that in the background. I'm now living at home with my parents. So there's other people and other animals in the house that might be making noises. So yeah, I can't help that. I'm really sorry um, anyway. So you can choose to follow this version of Pixarathon just like the last one where you pick the movies you want to watch and you follow the prompt and that's it. But what I have introduced this year is different routes that you can take where I have grouped together certain movies based on different themes. So there are six different routes for you to choose from. Like I said, they're completely optional. You can choose whichever route you like and you can also do multiple routes if you happen to finish one and want to keep following on with the readathon. The six routes, if I can remember them off the top of my head, are the adventure route, the animal lovers route, the anthropomorphic route, I know it's a horrible name, I apologise, the family route, the existential route and the monster route. So I will go into detail about all of these routes in just a minute, but like I said, you can choose to do any route you want. There's no kind of test or anything, no sign-ups, so just do whatever route feels most right for you or just follow along with the prompts however you feel they fit. You don't have to follow a route if you don't want to. For the readathon, you can only read one book per prompt. You can't double up on prompts for movies. However, each route will have its own route prompt. This is an intentionally really vague prompt and that is the only prompt you're allowed to double up and you can double it up with one of your movie prompts. You can not double up your movie prompts but you can double up a route prompt with a movie prompt and that can happen multiple times if you end up following multiple routes. In this readathon anything you want to count will count for this readathon. So I know before I've said if it counts on Goodreads it counts but if it counts on Storygraph it counts but also if you just want to read fan fiction this month or magazines that doesn't matter. Whatever you feel like reading, I just want to encourage you to get reading and help you get out of whatever kind of slump you might be in or enjoy whatever you enjoy to read. I'm not going to police this, there's going to be no sign-ups, no tracking, it's all just for your own enjoyment and for you to do whatever feels right for you. And one final rule, which isn't really a rule, is I want to encourage you to bend the rules and the prompts as much as you need to because, like I said, this is just to get you reading. I'm not going to be policing anything. If you want to say that something sounds like a quest when it's not really technically a quest but you think it should be that's totally fine like whatever you want to do to make it fit a prompt is fine the only things I would ask is that if you could please respect any prompts asking you to diversify your reading for example there are prompts that ask you to read books that have a certain representation in them and I would ask you not to bend those prompts because that really goes against the spirit of the prompt and would potentially offend a lot of people including me but when it comes to a prompt that's just you know read something with a family element, that one you can totally bend as much as you need to. So the first route that you can choose is the adventure route. This is one of the biggest ones, so it's not for the faint of heart, and it celebrates all of the adventure and action-packed movies made by Pixar. There are six movies in this group. Your route prompt for this one is to read a book that features a quest, adventure, road trip, anything that follows those kind of lines. And your six movies for this one are Wally Up, Nemo, The Good Dinosaur, Coco, and... Oh, I've forgotten. Onward. <laughs> Onward. I will be going through all of the prompts later on, so I will put timestamps in the description for you 
for you to jump between them but yeah prompts will be at the end. The next route that you can choose is the animal lovers route and this celebrates all of the Pixar movies that have an animal as the main character. It is one of the smaller routes so if you don't feel like you want to read loads this month then this might be one for you. Your route prompt for this one is to read a book that has an animal either as a main character or as a prominent side character. Obviously it can be quite hard to find books that have animal main characters especially if you are more of a contemporary reader but say there's a significant character like a dog that is the pet of the main character that would count. Anything that you think would count as a significant animal in the book will count for this prompt. And your four movies for the animal lovers route are The Good Dinosaur, Ratatouille, A Bug's Life and Finding Nemo. Next you have the anthropomorphic route and yes I know it's a horrible name, it's not catchy and good luck to everyone pronouncing it in any booktube videos you make. The reason that I couldn't come up with a better name for it is because there isn't really a synonym that means the exact same thing because anthropomorphic just means that something that is inanimate that has human-like qualities. So these are all of the movies that feature a inanimate object as a human-like main character. Your prompt for this one is to read a book that has a non-human main character or significant side character. Again, much like the one about the animals, it can be difficult if you're not a fantasy reader to find books with non-human main characters, so you can make it so that they're a side character as well, and it doesn't have to be a fantasy character, it could just be a regular animal we find, so it could be a very similar book to one you might choose for the animal lover's route. Your three movies for this one are Wally, -E, Toy Story and Cars. The next route you can choose is the existential route. You may have noticed, much like me, that Pixar seems to be becoming a bit existential. It feels like it's going through its emo phase. And this one is about the three movies that I feel like the most existential movies, which are three very recent movies. So these are movies that are what I call sad boy energy movies, and they're the ones that make you think, make you feel, and I don't know, kind of have some kind of psychological element to them. So your prompt for this one is to read a book that is going to make you feel something very deep. Deeply. This could be anything from a book that is gonna, you think is going to make you laugh uproariously, a book you think is going to make you cry, a book you think is going to make you really happy or really scared. Any kind of strong emotion is what you're going for here. And your three movies for this one are Coco, Soul and Inside Out. Next you can choose the family route and obviously this is another big one because family is very central to Pixar movies, rather unsurprisingly because these are family focused movies. And for this one you'll be collecting all of the movies that have a strong family element but that could be elements in different ways. So your root prompt for this one is to read a book that has a strong element of family in it but it doesn't have to be biological family, it could be a found family or it could be about the biological family in the book. It doesn't have to be a positive one or a negative one, however you want to fit this prompt. Now there are six movies again for this one, so if I'm looking off to the side, that's because I've forgotten them. Let's see if I can remember them. <laughs> so you have Coco, Onward, I've already forgotten, <laughs> Inside Out, Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, and Brave. And the final route you can choose is the monster route. And if Pixar has taught us anything, that is that monsters are not always what you expect them to be. So this one has all of the movies that have significant elements of monsters, usually a monster main character. Your prompt for this one is to read anything but contemporary and non-fiction because I want you to explore things that are outside of our world. Your four movies for this one are Onward, Monsters Inc, Monsters University and Luca. So that wraps up all of the routes and now I will go through all the prompts individually. If you're feeling like you're losing track, don't worry, there are timestamps in the description and also I have produced a document that I will go through at the end of this video that summarises everything and the link will be in, in the description below for the Google Drive. I'm going to go through the prompts in the release order of the movie and that's the order they are in the booklet for you. So Toy Story is one of the few mainstream movies that has a disabled main character just living its life and that would be in Toy Story 4. So your prompt for Toy Story is to read a book with own voices disability representation. This is one of the prompts that I would ask you not to bend but to try and follow as closely as you can. In A Bug's Life, the day is saved by a group of high-flying circus bugs, so for this movie you need to read a book that has some kind of circus, festival, carnival theme to it or within it. So it could just be that the characters visit a circus or it could be the central focus of the book, whichever you prefer. In Monsters Inc, Mike Wazowski taught us that laughter is much stronger than screen power so for this movie you need to read a book that you think is going to make you laugh. In Finding Nemo Dory suffers from short-term memory loss so for this movie you need to read a book that you forgot about whatever that means for you. 
Now, I don't know if I was the only one that didn't notice this as a kid, but The Incredibles is actually set in 1962. So for this one, I want you to read a book that is set in the 1900s. In Cars, Lightning McQueen is the fastest car around, or he wants to be. So for this one, please read a fast read. Ratatouille is set in the historical and beautiful city of Paris. Ratatouille is set in the historical and beautiful city of Paris in France. For this movie, I would like you to read a book that is set in a country other than your own, whether that's the one you currently live in or the one you were born and raised in. In Wally, -E, we get to see how humanity left the Earth to go and live on a rocket ship. So for this movie, I want you to read a book that has sci-fi elements, but that doesn't have to be a sci-fi book. If you really, really don't like reading anything other than contemporary, a mobile phone might just be a sci-fi element. Up is one of the few children's movies that has an elderly main character, so to honour that, for this movie I would like you to read a book with an elderly main character. The movie Brave is inspired by Scottish folklore and myths, so for this movie I would like you to read a book inspired by folklore and myths from any culture. Monsters University introduced us to... well, Monsters University, so I would like you to read a book set in either university or school. In Inside Out, we get to see the emotions that influence Riley's thoughts and feelings, so I want you to read a book that's going to make you think about something. In The Good Dinosaur, the lovely little dinosaur Arlo learns to be independent and to be his own person, so for this one I would like you to read a book that is a coming-of-age story in some way. Coco is all about one family's history and relationship with music, so for this one I'd like you to read a book that has some element of music or a focus on musicians. In Onward, the Lightfoot brothers must go on a journey to find a gem to save the day, so for this one I'd like you to read a book that has some element of puzzles or mysteries. Soul had Pixar's first black main character, so for this one I'd like you to read a book that has a main character of colour. And finally, Luca follows some sea monsters who are trying to fit in with the humans in their local seaside town, so I would like you to read a book that's set on or near the sea. So that is all of the prompts, all of the teams. If that is all you came here for, then there you go, you have it all. But there's one more thing I wanna to talk to you about and that is the document that I have created. So I will just shimmy across so that I'll have space on the screen for the document to show you what it looks like. So here is the document that I created. It's somewhat similar to the last one and I've tried to follow the formatting so it looks familiar. But basically the first few pages are just an introduction to Pixarathon and to me. It also has a quick summary of the rules and guidelines under the choose your route section. Then the next few pages covers each route, including the route prompt and the movies included within that route. And then of course you have all the prompts listed out for you and hopefully that will help you to keep track. And the final page in this one is the little reading tracker that we had last year. I've decided to keep it really simple again because people might choose to follow routes or they might choose just to freestyle it and use the prompts however they like and I hope that's really okay. So I think that's all of the information you need to know for the Pixarathon. If you need anything else please do let me know in the comments and I will get back to you. Now I'm really looking forward to hosting this one again this year. I will be doing it alone but I will also be trying to host reading sprints and perhaps even a 24 or 48 hour readathon if I get the time. So keep an eye out for that over on my Twitter which is at literary lily one and over on the pixarathon twitter which is just at pixarathon so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this and you're really looking forward to taking part in this readathon like i said any questions you have about the readathon put it in the comments below and i will try and get back to you make sure you also subscribe to keep up to date if i do any reading sprints and drop this video a like so that i know people are excited for the readathon if you just want to leave me a comment to let me know that you are here leave me the little emoji with a cowboy hat and yeah that will just let me know that you're here you're excited and you're looking forward to participating thank you so much for watching 